my introduction to Charles Dickens as a Christmas Carol, like many people of my age, was Mickey's Christmas Carol. This is, of course, the Disney adaptation of Dickens's tale, and this will always be one of my top two favourite adaptations. The other one, just for reference, is the one with Jim Carrey. I absolutely love it. But this one is quintessential Christmas Disney, and I have to say, there are two things I love about this. One, I just love the interpretation of the narrative. I think it adapts it very well and makes it very understandable for children. But I also, actually, three things I love. I also love Jiminy Cricket in this. This was one of, well, it's my favourite Jiminy Cricket thing. Much better than Pinocchio. Pinocchio terrifies me. Uh, and the third thing is I love the design of the ghosts. Specifically one ghost in particular, which I will talk about in a moment. So I'm not... <laughs> No, I was going to say I'm not going to give any spoilers here, but to be quite frank, I think it's very hard to spoil A Christmas Carol because I feel like everybody knows it. So I will not refrain from giving any real spoilers. I won't spoil the intricacies or details about um, you know, some of the things that the characters say that I really enjoyed. I won't go into too much detail, but I will be explaining the three ghosts and you know what, what this is actually about. This was released in 1983. It's actually a short. It's only 26 minutes, but in my memory, it was much longer. It was a full feature-length film. And that kind of sounds like that should be a bad thing because it sounds like it dragged, but actually it didn't. It's just that it got a lot in it. And, you know, it's really compelling and something that I absolutely love. So that works really well for me. And, you know, I can't... Uh, I can't really complain. So, just in case you are unfamiliar with the story, this is set in uh, 19th century London. It's Christmas Eve and Ebenezer Scrooge is... Well, he's a Scrooge. He is not wanting to let his employee, Bob Cratchit, go home for Christmas. He changes his mind, but he's only giving him half a day's pay for it. He is mean. We very quickly get to grips with the fact that he is not a very pleasant character. And... On Christmas Eve, he is visited by his old friend, Jacob Marley. And Jacob Marley tells him he will be visited by three ghosts, the ghosts of Christmas past, present and future, who will try to help him learn the error of his ways and help him to be a better person. Ultimately, they can only guide him. They cannot change who he is. And as the film develops... Scrooge is shown various different Christmas scenarios from his past, present and future and other people's Christmases to help him understand that he needs to be nicer. And obviously I'm not going to go any, into any specific detail about those scenes, but I will say that I think that everything develops really well. They're exactly what I would have wanted from it. Ultimately, I cannot fault the interpretation or development of the narrative. Something else I really love is the casting, and it seems really weird to talk about the casting in an animation but Disney characters are playing these roles so obviously Ebenezer Scrooge is played by Scrooge McDuck as a Scot I have to say the um the acting the voice acting is just so brilliant to my ears um Scrooge is actually voiced by Alan Young who is a Scottish American actor so the accent is not to the best of my knowledge forced I'm not sure if Alan Young had a Scottish accent but certainly he would have had Scottish heritage that would have kind of given him a bit of leverage I'm not sure if you do know do let me know Mickey Mouse is of course Bob Cratchit and that obviously gives us other characters like Minnie and uh, the children and <laughs> uh, Tiny Tim as well Tiny Tim of course broke my heart and still does Jiminy Cricket plays the ghost of Christmas past absolutely love him in this Willie the Giant is the ghost of Christmas present is one of the most visually iconic Disney characters that I don't really remember. You know, he's not a character that I've seen in anything else. But whenever I see him in this, or I see a picture of the illustration, I'm just taken straight back to my childhood when I used to watch this at Christmas. He's, I love the animation style. Really, really creepy. Uh, Pete plays the Ghost of Christmas Future. I'm not really that bothered about Pete as a character. I never really have been. Um, but, you know, he's been around since the 1920s, so he's a pretty interesting one still. Uh, Donald and Daisy are um, Scrooge's nephew and uh, I guess niece-in-law I don't think that's a thing and then Goofy 
as Jacob Marley's ghost. Absolutely fantastic. I have no complaints with any of the casting, of course, and I love the interpretation of the story. The animation design is beautiful, particularly the ghost uh, of Goofy or of Jacob Marley. I just love that kind of ethereal blue. It's so spiritual and a bit eerie and icy cold. It works really well. If you've never seen any version of A Christmas Carol, I think most people would recommend The Muppets Christmas Carol as the first one to watch, but I would like to recommend this one as the first one to watch because it's fun, it's beautiful, it's short, it's Disney. In my eyes, it's perfect.